I just want to warn that some people may find the graphics used in this video to be disturbing. I used this material so that people can see what is actually done to the animals. I think this is important for helping people understand the scope of what is happening. If you don't want to see any of this, stop watching the video now. Humans have been using animals to their advantage since forever. For much of this time, the suffering that we inflict on animals hasn't been given much thought. This was largely due to the necessity of killing and using animals for labor. If we didn't do this, people would starve. While we have increasingly developed other means of securing these same resources, the impact that we have on the animal population continues to skyrocket. So first, let's take a look at the context. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, approximately 56 billion land animals are reared and slaughtered for human consumption. That's about 106,000 deaths per minute. This number is expected to double by 2050, and note that this number fails to account for fish and all other aquatic creatures. So many of these animals die that they are usually measured in tons. Over 99% of land animals are raised on factory farms where conditions are especially terrible as profits and the efficiency of the process are championed over all else. These farms are notorious for their tendency to be horribly overcrowded, neglect sick and injured animals, and force animals to remain indoors in low light, poor air quality conditions. They also lack proper regulation due to an over-reliance on state and county laws, which means that insufficient attention is directed towards stopping or at least limiting the suffering. Additionally, roughly 115 million animals are experimented on in laboratory settings each year. Keep in mind that this is a very rough estimate. Numbers available are often outdated and incomplete, with only 37 countries providing partial national figures and further estimates being made based on publications of research. We do have reason to believe that these numbers have increased in recent years. For example, U.S. experimentation has been increasing for some time. I want to explore these topics more in future videos, but for now let's talk about speciesism. Speciesism is described as discrimination in favor of one species, usually the human species, over another, especially in the exploitation or mistreatment of animals by humans. Speciesism is justified on the notion of human exceptionalism, the idea that humans are different and better than other living creatures. I want to point out that humans have used exceptionalism to treat others differently throughout history, notably on the basis of race, gender, mental health, and, probably most relevant to speciesism, intellectual ability. As time has gone on, society has increasingly understood that treating individuals as lesser beings based on these criteria is discriminatory and should be avoided wherever possible. While discrimination remains a tremendous problem in the world today, we have seen a massive increase in public understanding of these issues, and educational and legal frameworks that seek to address and prevent discrimination have been expanding for decades. Progress has been far, far slower in addressing animal issues. I argue that general society today is clearly speciesist. Even if you think being speciesist is acceptable, I think it is undeniable that many humans are incredibly open and even outwardly pleased in some cases about being speciesist. The vast majority of the world eats meat, and the inclusion of animals in our diets is often celebrated. The primary rationale for using animals to advance our own causes is based on the differences in intelligence that are observed between humans and animals. Note that this is a standard that most would say is unacceptable to apply to humans. Clearly, it is wrong to discriminate against someone as a result of mental handicaps that are beyond their control. Yet, general society says it is okay to kill, eat, abuse, and subject animals to painful research experiments by the tens of billions on the grounds that they are less intelligent than us. Many have pushed back against this, arguing that intellectual capability should not be the determining factor in our treatment of animals. As Jeremy Bentham states in an introduction to the principles of morals and legislation, The question is not, can they reason, nor can they talk, but rather, can they suffer? Why should the law refuse its protection to any sensitive being? One proposed explanation for this is in-group favoritism, a feature of evolution that leads to us favoring in-group members more than out-group members. This is often cited as being a motivator of discrimination such as racism. One group perceives another as being a member of a different group because they do not look the same. It is extremely easy for us to fall victim to disregarding animals on these same grounds. They do not look the same as us, they do not act the same as us, and they can't easily share how they are thinking and feeling. We are also speciesist in the sense that we favor the rights of certain species over others. Here in Western society, we love dogs and cats, but pigs belong on the dinner plate. This distinction is largely arbitrary. 
Pigs are widely regarded as being intelligent animals, possibly even smarter than three-year-old children, and probably your canine friend too. Yet we have no problem raising pigs in horribly abusive conditions so that we may kill them by the millions. A large part of this is probably due to the fact that most people are raised in a speciesist society. If you do something your entire life, you are way less likely to question it, and the suggestion that your actions might be wrong may be inconceivable or even offensive. Eating meat has become a celebrated part of our culture, and people feel so reliant on it in their diets that removing it can feel like a scary change. We are also far removed from the uglier side of this culture. The abuse that it takes to provide this meal is hidden from us in our daily lives, and by the time the meal reaches the table, it usually doesn't resemble the animal it came from in a recognizable way. This can help people from feeling like they are involved in the killing, even if it is their money that funds such killing. I hope this video was helpful in explaining the background and concept of speciesism and the reason why so many today are okay with us being speciesist. Thanks so much for watching this video, and if you've made it this far, I just want to say that I do not intend on degrading anyone's beliefs. This video is just about starting a conversation. So if you disagree with anything that I said here, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm really interested in hearing everyone's thoughts.